Hello, this is Melinda Rose, and today we're going to be going over the expiratory system. The expiratory system is the organs that remove metabolic waste from your body. There are four major organs within the expiratory system. The skin, the lungs, the liver, and the kidneys. Now previously we talked about the skin, lungs, and liver under different sections of the body, but in this section we're going to focus mainly on their ability to remove waste. Our skin secretes excess salt, water, and a small amount of urea. Now urea is a toxic compound that is produced by the breakdown of amino acids to provide energy. So whenever you eat something like a steak, your body gets a lot of protein, which it breaks down into amino acids. When your body breaks amino acids down, um, the byproduct is urea. Urea is toxic, and so your body has to get rid of it, and one of the ways it does that is by secreting it onto your skin. The next set of organs that help with getting rid of waste is your lungs. Your lungs are the primary way that your body gets rid of excess carbon dioxide. I'm sure you remember that carbon, dioxi carbon dioxide is produced as a product of cellular respiration. And once our cells have created that carbon dioxide, they shunt it into the bloodstream where it goes to the lungs and is exhaled from our body. Now you know the liver as the part of your body that produces bile to help break down fat in the small intestine. But the liver also converts excess nitrogen containing compounds into urea. The reason that we use urea is urea is easily excreted by the kidneys. The main part of the excretory system that we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this slide are your kidneys. Your kidneys remove waste from the blood while regulating the amount of salt and water in the blood. To be alive, you need to have one functional kidney. Now, if you're in an accident or some type of illness destroys one of your kidneys, the other kidney will grow a bit and is usually pretty capable of taking over for the missing kidney. But if something damages both of your kidneys, like high blood pressure, um, you will need to go on dialysis, um, in which your body um, is attached to a machine that will function like a kidney and clean out your blood um, until either your kidneys heal or you are eligible for a kidney transplant. Let's talk a bit about the gross anatomy of the kidneys. Um, your kidneys are located next to the spinal column in your lower back, and they act as a pressure-based blood filter. Now, the fact that they're run by pressure means that high blood pressure over time can destroy your kidneys. In the middle of your kidneys is a tube, and it's called the ureter. The ureter connects the kidneys to the bladder. Your bladder is a sac-like organ that stores urine before it is ex excreted. And the last part of the excretory system involving the kidneys is the urethra. The urethra is a tube that connects the bladder to the outside of the body. Having talked about the gross anatomy of the kidneys, now we're going to pay some attention to the microscopic anatomy of the kidneys. The nephron is the functional filtering unit of the kidneys. There are several parts to a nephron. The first part that we're going to look at is the glomerulus. The glomerulus here is a small network of capillaries. The blood flows into the glomerulus here and flows out there. Surrounding the glomerulus is the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule is a hollow structure, cup-shaped structure that surrounds the glomerulus. The way that the blood is filtered is blood is forced under pressure through the glomerulus. The water, salt, sugars, amino acid, and urea are forced out of the blood into the Bowman's capsule. Those chemicals that were forced out of the blood are called the filtrates. The filtrate then moves from the Bowman's capsule into the loop of Hemi a thin tube that connects the Bowman's capsule to the collecting duct, which is surrounded by capillaries. The capillaries that surround the loop of Henle 
act to capture, recapture really, most of the water and the nutrients, such as the sugar, that were pushed out into the filtering. Once they're recaptured by the capillaries, they head back into your body. So the capillaries not only retake the nutrients from the filtrate, but then they, that blood then recirculates in your body. The remaining waste material, excuse me, such as urea and some of the salts, flow to the collecting duct. The collecting ducts connect the loop of Henle to the ureter. Once the waste materials reach the ureter, they collect together and form urine. Urine is useful um, for testing purposes. Most drugs are excreted by the kidneys. So when you run tests on urine, you can tell what drugs the patient has taken. So this is important in a situation where somebody comes in unconscious to the hospital because we, if somebody's unconscious, we probably don't know what legal or illegal drugs they've taken. So by testing the urine, we can tell if there's a medication that the patient is on that other medications may interact with in a dangerous way. Or perhaps um, they've used an illegal drug of some kind. And it's important the doctors know that so that they don't prescribe you a medication that will interact with that. In addition, urine tests can be used to detect health problems such as diabetes. When your blood sugar gets too high, your body will attempt to protect you by shunting the extra glucose out into the urine. So if your blood sugar is too high, um, both glucose and ketones, which is um, a byproduct of an attempt to break down the extra sugar, will show up in your urine. That's the end of the notes for today. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you later.